Hey there, I'm SourceMake and welcome to part D of the Java series, where we are going to deploy a Java API to Heroku. So as usual, I've got the resources that we need for this project right here on my website. You're actually going to need to go to this page, so there'll be a link below the video. Go ahead and click it, and while you're down there, hit the subscribe button to the YouTube channel. Thanks. And as I said, this is part D of the Java series. We've done a bunch of other videos, so I'm going to assume that you know about Maven and about Spring for Java. Basically, Maven is a build tool and Spring is a library, a plugin that you use for Java. And when you use that plugin, it helps you build APIs really easily because it handles a lot of the details about HTTP methods and stuff like that. So um, we're going to be doing this on Heroku's website. If you don't know what Heroku is, Heroku is a cloud platform service. So they have cloud computing stuff, resources on their website. They basically have the servers that we're going to run our job code on. And it's really easy to use it. It's pretty much free. It's not intrusive at all when I say like, compared to AWS and Microsoft Azure and all those other companies, to be honest with you, you don't have to sign up for an account and then learn about a million things. It's, they, they're documentation is so good it's so simple i wouldn't recommend them if they weren't like really popular but they are so that's what we're going to be using for java so i've got my ubuntu virtual machine running right now ubuntu 16 obviously i've got the java project folder open so we're going to create a new project and call it heroku and we are going to go to the link on heroku's website so going to go right here and Heroku has great documentation as I said we're just going to be going through all of these list things to deploy our tutorial so we're going to go to Heroku in our project folder we're going to open in terminal and we are going to resize this a little bit so that it looks nice this is how we work and okay deploying Spring Boot applications to Heroku on Heroku's website. This is their tutorial. So the first thing you need to do is download the Heroku CLI and you need to choose your operating system. As I said, we're using Ubuntu, so that's what we're going to use. So you click it and they tell you a bunch of commands to run in your terminal. So we're going to be running them. This is to install the Heroku CLI command line interface. And as I said, Heroku is a cloud platform service. So they have servers somewhere in the world that are going to be running our Java code. And basically we're going to use the, this is installing the command line tool so that we can interact with their services, which means th we're going to have to host their code on their server. So how are we going to get it there? Well, you use the command line tool. That's basically how it works. So that's why we're installing it. Okay. So I already had Heroku install. So this went by really quickly, but for you, it might not just, you know, follow the tutorial. And next thing we need to do is Heroku login. So I'm going to do that right now, but I don't really want to do this on the stream. I mean, on, on the video. So I'm going to pause the video really quickly and then I'm going to log in. So pause. Okay, we're back. So I just did Heroku login and I entered my email and password because I had to sign up. If you need to sign up, go ahead, like right up here, you can click lock in and sign up. It's really easy. It's really not that hard. They don't ask you for credit card or anything like that. It's just literally username and password. So that's really nice of them. So next, creating a Spring Boot app. Again, Heroku has the servers. We need to provide them with the code. And what they're telling us right here is that they want us to make a basic Spring application. So. They give us a sample app, but what we're going to do is we're going to create a basic app using Spring. And this is going to be a little bit complicated. Bear with me on this. So I'm moving back to the Java project folder, and I'm going to say Spring Base. Now, here's what they want us to do to create the application ourselves, which is useful anytime we need to build a new application. You might want to start from scratch. You don't want to always have to copy old code in so what they want us to do is spring init dependencies web my app now the issue with this is if you actually try to do this inside the project folder which which would be right here right now it says the pro the program spring can't be found because i don't have spring installed and to be honest with you I don't want it to install it. it. I don't want to install it globally on my command line. It seems like a little bit of a hassle. So what we're going to do is we're going to download the project and we're going to use the Spring script itself to do this. So 
I've got this spring base folder inside the Java right here, you can see. And we're going to install spring, the actual project for spring right here. So we're going to open the terminal. And on my website, you can see I've got four commands here. And I'm going to wget that. And what this does is it installs the actual spring project, the actual code right here into this folder. That's what this first line does. Now this next line right now as it stands says sudo in front of it, but don't use sudo because it's annoying. It, it'll give you an error. So just use this. Unzip spring. You're going to unzip this using the command line. Oh, it wanted a password? Alright, you can have a password. Okay, so so it... Why, why did sudo unzip? Did I say sudo unzip? What just happened? Okay, let's get rid of this. I don't know why that happened. Oh, this is so annoying. Okay, so let's sudo remove, and what is it called? Spring 1.5.10.release. And it is a folder, so we need to say slash r. So we're going to unzip this. We are not going to use sudo. I have no idea why that happened. That's so weird. Yeah, so, so we're going to unzip it. And you can see the difference between sudo and not sudo is that there's this little lock. And if the lock is there, it's, it's just like... It gives you errors because it, Ubuntu thinks that this is a root folder that only root can access, like the big top admin person, and that's just not what we need. So next we're going to look inside, and it's got this is the actual project for Spring, and you can look inside bin, and you can see this Spring file. Now this Spring file, if you open it up, it's actually just like a bunch of code, as most files are. And what it's going to do is it's going to let us do this spring command without needing to install the command globally into our terminal. So instead of globally installing spring and, and spring being running this file from some, the way it works is you have the command on the command line, but these commands just go back to some file that actually has the code that runs this functionality, some bash script. So and we're just going to use the actual file itself instead of doing it globally. This might seem a little convoluted. You can just copy the project. I'll post it on GitHub, I guess, after this, when, when this tutorial is done. But this is how you would do it. So what we need to do is we need to CD into this folder, CD into spring release slash bin. And the next thing we need to do is actually do this command. So let's copy this. But you can see that the command is right here. I'm just showing you for demonstration purposes. Oh, it, it's pasting for some reason without anything. You'll see that if you try to run that command, it's not going to work because the terminal thinks you're trying to use a global command from the terminal. But that's not what we're using. We're using this file. So we need to actually say dot slash to actually call the bash script. So go ahead and do that. And what this does is it actually does this command, but it uses the file instead of a global command, as I said, it's a global terminal command. And this creates the base app for us. So this is the base application. It's got source, it's got a Maven file, and it's got a pom.xml file. So it's just a basic Spring boilerplate project. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to go back into the Heroku folder, and I'm going to paste it right in here. Then I'm going to close this terminal. So once again, we're back in the Heroku terminal, you can see right here, and ls, all we've got is this app that we made using Spring. Really, I know it seems a little complicated, but you don't want to have to install, honestly, this tutorial is really good overall, but the way they handled telling you just make sure Spring works so that you could use this command was really a hassle when I tried to do it, so I'm saving you the heartache because I, I did it before this, to, I, before I started recording. So. Next, we're going to cd into my app. So let's do that. Now our terminal is right here. It's looking right here. And the application does not have any custom logic by default. It's just an empty template, of course. To add some behavior, go to source, main, Java, demo. So you should know what a Maven application looks like. You've got source, and inside source is the actual code that we have. Then they've got the test code, so the unit test. So what do they want? Source, main, go into Java, and go into demo i didn't see a demo i did not see a demo but we're gonna just keep going until we get here i guess that's one of the things i don't like about me even compared to us like just doing the job of compiling ourselves there's like a million folders which 
makes no sense to me. I just don't understand. But people love it. Well, it, it's good for the libraries. I said this in the Maven video. So we're going to put this code inside of it. And yeah. So let's look at the code really quickly. Package demo. We import a bunch of the Spring Framework stuff, which is basically going to handle the API portion of the code so that we don't have to do that. We're using an annotation, which I'm going to do a video on very soon. And in, to, to say that this is the controller and that this is Spring Boot application. And let me fix the indenting a little because, you know, we like to indent the cool way, the way my programming master taught us, not, not the way society tells you to indent. I meant to do this. So let's look at what this code does. We, we've, we're saying that this is a controller and we're saying this is a Spring Boot application. This is just metadata because that's what annotations are. So we've got a public class named demo application, which is the name of the file, which makes a lot of sense. We've got more annotations saying that this mapping goes to root. Now, once again, if you don't know about APIs, it's okay, we don't need this anymore. So if you don't know about APIs, I have a whole series on APIs on my website, which makes a big deal because I'm just glossing over this, but you should know what this is. So this tutorial will teach you what APIs are. And like I, in the Node.js API tutorial, I go through all this, but I'm also gonna make another tutorial in the future about how to make a Java API for the series. So just take it for granted that you know what this is. I'm just going to assume you know what this is. Basically, the, if, if you don't know what this is, then go ahead and watch the API video series. Again, he, there'll be a link. You can get to this page really easily on my website. So go ahead and go to the directory and look at these videos, these web pages. It'll help you out. If not, I don't know, just take for granted. So, so this is going to map all root paths to our API to this main. And this is going to give the response body or something like that. I don't know. And We've got a string named home that's a function for some reason that is going to return hello world. It's just a basic function that returns a string. And we've got main right here. So this is where our program starts. And what's happening is spring application dot run demo application dot class arg. So this basically just starts our API. It's going to return hello world, I think. That's what it looks like to me. And this creates a simple request mapping that displayed hello world in the browser. Okay, that displayed. That's uh, really weird because we didn't, they said displayed, but they didn't tell us to actually run it yet. Just kind of weird in the tutorial. Preparing Spring Boot app for Heroku, let's move on. So we need to add this code to Heroku. Now this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go back to the project root folder and where do we need to go? I think we need to go right here. So. We're still in my app right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to initialize this to be a Git repository. If you don't know what Git is, Git is just like a code versioning system. And we are going to add all the files inside here to our Git repository locally. And we're going to commit this change. And we're going to say it's an initial commit. Okay. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to Heroku create. So we're using the Heroku. I logged in before and we installed Heroku. And this is basically going to prepare our account for Heroku servers under our account for this application. So you can see creating app done. This is the actual URL for our project. And what this does is it tells Heroku, OK, prepare some space on the servers for this application. And now we're going to git push Heroku master. So what this does is Heroku created space on their servers to run our application, to run our API. And what this is going to do is Git is going to push our code onto Heroku servers. There's obviously more details than that, but that's basically what this is. So we're pushing it to Heroku master, master instead of normally origin master. Now this is going to take like a couple of seconds, not too long, but it takes a little bit. And it's going to, the first time you do this, Heroku has to set up a repository to actually hold our code. Because, you know, code isn't magic. It's not just in the air, in the air somewhere. It's got to sit on someone's hard drive somewhere. And Heroku, you know, they make it easy for us. I, I, I can't even begin to describe how easy they make this process. 
Because, you know, if this was AWS or Azure, you'd have to do a whole bunch of things. So we're going to test this out now. Right now, our code is sitting on Heroku's repository somewhere on their hard drive. And every time we go to this specific URL, then Heroku is going to have a server that looks at the code and runs it as an API so it can return stuff. So what you do is you say Heroku open. And that is going to open our web browser. I think Chrome is going to open right now. And it's going to display Hello World. So you know what? Why don't we actually just customize our application a little bit just to make sure that it's not some randomness. So we're going to go back to the actual code. And we're going to say Hello World from SourceMake. And that's it. So, so we saved the file and now we change the status. So what we're going to do is we're going to update our code by saying get add, add the code again, add all the files because we just changed them. And again, we're back here in this project folder. You can see hacks, Java, Heroku, my app, Heroku, my app. That's the path. So we're going to commit a new change, changed message. And we're going to push that to Heroku master. So we're updating the code in Heroku's repository for the project. And doing that will allow Heroku's code project to update. So anytime we test the server, it'll update. And it takes a little bit to get there because again, this is sort of like continuous integration. If you don't know what that is, I'm going to be doing another tutorial on that too. But Heroku open and it's going to open the project for us. Now, once again, I'm telling you, this URL is where our server lives. So you could give this to anyone and it'll it'll open because we have it hosted here. So hello world from source make, our project open. Now, they've got a bunch of other stuff that tells you logs and there's some more to this tutorial where we can add a database to it, but that's a little out of the scope for this. You can see that basically what they do is they add a database using Heroku and then Using that, you can actually add this to your library dependencies for Maven in your pom.xml file. Again, your dependencies for this project. Uh, this should have opened using gedit. I don't know why it loves to open using Firefox. You can see the library dependencies right here, like Spring is one of them, obviously, because it's handling the API stuff. Let's close this. And that's pretty much it. So. You can go further in this, and I do recommend that you do this tutorial yourself, and you can do this yourself, but that's basically it. So Heroku is a cloud service, and you can let them host your Java code so that you can run an API for free. That was all free. I don't have any like credit card information. Actually, I do have credit card information, but they don't charge anything. I just did that because I think to add to the to add add-ons like the database, you need to add. A credit card in case like you go over but just to host this project itself is free so it's it's like amazing if you want to build your own API or your own website Heroku is amazing and you'll see that we use this as a base because I'm going to be doing an actual Java API video for the website making an API so you can see I already did this long tutorial using Node and I did like a crazy great job where we go in depth. But right now our API is like super basic. Again, an API is just a function of over the internet. We want our Java code to run some function and then return an answer to the user or update a database. Like, And you can see that we only have one really simple file here and it doesn't really do anything. It just returns hello world. but. Using this as a boilerplate, you can expand the project to be as good as you want. And again, to do that, what you need to do is you need to learn about Spring, learn about Maven, and once you deploy that to Heroku, you use those three things and you learn about the Java language itself and you can build amazing APIs pretty much like what the big banks, what everyone does. That's what they do. You basically have the foundation now to go further. So. I will be doing a Java API project. So do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Once again, I'm SourceMake. You learned about Java Heroku instances. We deployed our own API instance to Heroku. So thanks for watching. Subscribe. Thanks.